at the festival this year, uh, we will be showing a film called uh, A Flower in the Mouth, which is actually uh, adapted from a play by Luigi Pirandello. It's a project that I've been thinking about for a very long time because in some sense it's almost my first film idea, which I had when I was um, dabbling in theater years ago. And uh, um, friends of mine were performing in this play. It's a one-act play about um, a man who has a flower in his mouth, a flower in the sense of a, uh, a tumor, an epithelioma, which is a, a very deadly disease. And in 1922, when Pirandello wrote the play, it's a disease that would kill you in a few weeks. And so it's a story of a man who knows he's going to die and who spends the last few days or weeks that he has on this earth walking around the streets and observing um, life as it unfolds and observing the small details of people at work. And then in the evenings, because he can't sleep, he um, finds a stranger in a, in a bar next to a train station and he talks to him all night. So the first part of the film, which is uh, not at all um, derived from the original Pirandello text, is a, a long visit in the world's largest flower market. So the first 30 minutes of the film take us to uh, Alzmir, which is a, a city just outside of uh, Amsterdam, where the world's largest flower market operates. And so we spent a large amount of time filming this process, filming the flowers, filming the work of this, of the people who unpack the flowers, pack them up again, uh, the auctioneers who, who buy and sell them. Um, and so it's, it's a, the film is kind of constructed in this diptych form where half of the film is just this pure observational cinema in the flower market and the second half of the film is the text from the Pirandello play. So there's this very simple idea of, you know, the flower that is killing the, the man in, in, in the form of a tumor, I guess, is uh, put in parallel with this other beautiful flower that in some sense is killing us um, from an ecological perspective because, uh, because this industry is sort of in the image of so many things that we've developed as a, as a society is uh, both beautiful and completely monstrous and, and destructive. Cinema does many, many things, but one thing that um, it does is it just observes the world through, through, through sounds and image. And another thing that cinema does is uh, ask actors to perform a text um, in the form of a script. And uh, in a way, this film is, takes these two ways of making films uh, to their sort of extremes. In one case, it's you know, just a camera on the shoulder of Claire Maton, my, my operator, who um, is immersed in this flower market. And um, in the other half of the film, it's really about text. It's about dialogue. It's about literature. It's about words. And there's two actors in a bar, you know, for half an hour sitting across the table from each other just talking. So it was a way for me of uh, sort of pushing the possibilities of cinema in its simplest forms, but that are somewhat extremely different from each other and folding them back together in a film um, sort of where the first half of the film converses with the second. C'est l'heure de la mandoline. Ah, c'est rare, non On n'entend plus trop sur l'instrument. Si, tous les soirs ici. This film, or this project, is the first time that I've made very different versions for the screen and for the exhibition space, because up until this point, it was always the same film that was shown in a museum or in a cinema. It was a single channel, durational piece. Um, this is the first time that I've edited a completely different version for 
the exhibition space. So the, the cinema version, which was premiered at the, at the Berlin Film Festival, is a 67-minute linear film on a single screen. And when we did an exhibition at the Kunsthalle in St. Gallen, we installed it in five monitors, on five projections, sorry, and we cut a completely different version of the film with Claire Atherton. It's much shorter, it's 25 minutes, it does not include most of the scenes, the dialogue scenes in the, uh, in the cafe, but it blows out the um, activities in the, uh, in the flower market onto five different screens and it becomes a very immersive environment. Uh, so it's a different experience and so this is the first time that I've sort of been interested in the project branching out into two very different forms. Um, and it's been an interesting experience for me. Um, I don't know that, I think it, is, it has a lot to do with the specificities of, of this particular film, which is very dialogue based and it's complicated to listen to half an hour of dialogue in a museum. And it's also in a very, the possibilities of making something very immersive were um, offered by the this sort of bustering activity, this, this uh, hectic activity in the flower market, which I wanted to reproduce in a volume, reproduce in a, uh, in a space rather than simply on one screen.